Hi, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you three ways you could make history more fun in your homeschool. So if you enjoy this type of content, please remember to subscribe and let's get into it. This is an open collaboration video with Abby from Rooted in Rest and Jessica from the Waldock Way. So there'll be a playlist linked down below that shows other homeschool moms and how they make history fun in their homeschool or ideas of how you could make history fun in your homeschool. And so make sure you check that out. And today I'm just, I'm gonna share a few ideas that I had. I'm not going to say that I am amazing at making history fun in our homeschool, because I am not. I feel like it is a struggle to constantly like have history be enjoyable to teach. There, I have yet to find a really good curriculum that I really enjoy and like to use consistently. It's just a really hard subject, I feel like, across the board to teach, which is probably why they picked it as a topic for this month's collaboration because it is just a difficult topic to teach and have it be fun. So as I went through this, I thought of three ways. Some of them we have done. There's one of them that we have not at all. And so I'm going to share those things with you. The first one is teach history through historical fiction. Growing up, that was my favorite way to learn about history. I love history. I just don't love the facts. Like, let's say this war happened here and this was the timeline and did, 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 did. I just don't really care or relate to that. It's really hard for me to keep track of all those different types of things, but if you give me a historical fiction book, then I'm into it. It's my favorite genre to read is historical fiction, and I just love all those stories. So you could do them as read alouds in your homeschool and read to your kids all these different types of stories. You know, and then if you're reading stuff that has more difficult topics, you can discuss them. Like World War II is one of my favorite time periods to read about. Or if you have somewhat older kids or more age appropriate books, like historical fiction, you could have them have it as their like personal reading. I was just gonna show you a couple examples that I quickly grabbed for this video. So the first one is Ernest Shackleton, and this is not fiction. <laughs> so just I'm putting that out there. You could read historical fiction or you could do historical nonfiction as well. And this is historical nonfiction. But I wanted to mention it because I love this story and I feel like it's super engaging. I am hoping that we'll get to it this year and I can read these to my kids. So I have The Heroes of History, which would be fun just to read through some more of these books as a read aloud or again individually. And this is the Ernest Shackleton one. So I read this one myself. And then I also had gotten this book, The Shipwreck at the Bottom of the World. And there's several other books. And this one's pretty easy to go through. It has some different pictures in here as well. But the, that's one of my suggestions, okay? Again, not fiction, it's nonfiction. But you could pick some more engaging books that are nonfiction and read those together. And then to go along with the historical fiction, <laughs> we, I brought some Titanic books. Growing up, and even now, I don't know what it is about the Titanic, but I love reading stories about it. And so this one is one just I had on my shelf. I have some on the bookshelf over here from when I was really young and that I read and they're probably like super outdated and old books. But those were ones I loved reading when I was younger and there's like the American Girl Diary ones. They have a Titanic one, so that could be a good option for some younger kids. But this one, I feel like my 10 year old could read this book. Again, it has a little bit heavier things in it, but it has a good story that runs through it and gives a different perspective. And then this is another one also on the Titanic that isn't as, like this is a romantic, like a romance. <laughs> I'm like, what's that genre? This is a historical romance and historical fiction. You know, like it's all the things in one. And so if you like that sort of thing, that's here. But this one doesn't have really like romance type things going in. It's a little bit more factual, even though some of it is fictional. And it's from the perspective of the Carpathia. And so it gives you, which is the ship that rescued the Titanic survivors. And so it gives you a different perspective. So if you wanted to have a different perspective on what was going on, you could read this one 
as well. So I'm just, again, these are just suggestions of things that I like to read. I have so many World War II books, like my bookshelves are full of them as well that I just really like. And I have learned a lot about history through those things. Again, you have to be careful because not everything is factual in them. Mostly it's around the stories, but some of the the facts they give are not actually real. So you have to be a little bit careful with that. But I feel like it is such a great way and an engaging way to learn about history. My second idea for how to make history fun in your homeschool is by doing mini units of history. And so sometimes, you know, a huge curriculum, it can be very overwhelming and mundane, <laughs> to be honest, like day after day or every couple days when you're doing history, it can just be like, <laughs> and just boring and stuff. So maybe if you're doing like little snippets or little units where they're changing fairly frequently, that might be a little bit more engaging. So <laughs> Jessica from the Waldock Way, who is in this collaboration, gifted me some of her curriculum. And so I have some of her mini units that I'm gonna share. She has a bunch, like so, so many on her website. I'll link that down below also. And you can go and pick out, there's tons about people. The ones I have to show you are about events. One of them is about the Titanic. And the other one is about the Twin Towers, which we have started doing the Twin Towers one. We haven't gotten into the notebook a whole lot. But something that I love about this which goes along with the whole idea of reading books about history, which I think is just more interesting, is in the beginning of her units, whatever this is called, <laughs> at the beginning of her units, there's a whole list of books right here. And so I went through the books and got a whole bunch. And I've mentioned before, we have, we're kind of part of a charter system, my tech high. And so we have a bunch of money. So if you don't have the resources to buy the books, you could either just pick one maybe that you could buy, or if you have a good local library, hopefully you could go find some good resources there. But so far, I really like the ones that she has recommended. So we read, let me hold them up. I have a whole bunch like books and books and books. I love books. And so we read this one and even though, so I was in ninth grade when 9-11 happened. And so even though I remember it happening, there's a lot of facts about it that either I didn't remember or never knew. And so we read this book just this past week and I was like, wow, like I learned so much. It's very simple, very short, but it was, it was fascinating to me. Okay. Like just to learn about it. And again, I'm not trying to like put down how horrific the whole thing was, but it was just interesting to learn about all the things that were actually happening. And then we have just started reading this like more novel type book. Again, more historical fiction and we're a few chapters in and so far we have been enjoying it and interesting, like I'm interested to see kind of where the story goes and it's very simplified too. So it's a little easier for my kids to understand, but I have a few other books we can go through. So some of the main books that are mentioned are what were the Twin Towers and then like what was the tin Titanic or who was Anne Frank, you know, those kind of things. And so you can just get this book and you could go through and it would give you the information that you could fill out in this little packet. And again, it's just short. Like it's a super short thing. You could spend just a month on each one, a few weeks, depending on what you wanna do. You know, we are diving more into the book section of each of these. So I have the Titanic one also printed here and I got a bunch of books that were recommended by Jessica right here. So I have all these books to go through. So I think studying history in just little units and little snippets actually is more interesting than taking it as a whole and just kind of going through in 1940, this is what happened in 1950, this is what happened in 1960, this is what happened. You know, the, here's the roaring twenties. I'm like, it's just not as interesting, at least to me. So I think if you take these little sections, it just makes history come alive and makes it more fun. The third thing I wanted to mention is something we have not done before, but I think it sounds super fun. I feel like it would make history come alive and I've seen like some public schools do this and maybe even some home schools, I'm not completely sure, but it's to pick like a person in history and have like each of your kids learn about a certain person in history. They can dress up as them, like give a presentation. They could even, you know, have a certain type of food or an activity from where that person's from or what they did. 
I feel like that would be super fun, you know, and have it, especially if you have a little homeschool co-op group or community that you can get together with and do it. And, you know, it helps your kids practice their presentation skills, their public speaking skills, but it also helps them learn how to do research. But then they get to do something fun with it and you can help them like dress up and, you know, make a food or whatever. But I feel like that would make history come alive. And it can just be like little snippets of time. You know, you can decide how long they're gonna do their research and all that kind of stuff and when you're gonna present. But again, it doesn't have to be a super heavy consuming history curriculum. It can be something very simple, but there's so many skills that they're gonna learn there. Even if you have to go to the library and like check out books, they have to learn how to look up stuff at the library. There's a lot of skills involved in it. And I just think it would be a really fun, great activity. So if anybody else wants to join me, <laughs> maybe we'll do it eventually. It's hard because I have kids that are like such varying ages that some of them would need a lot of help and others might not need hardly any. <laughs> and so it's hard to know like, okay, when's the best time, you know, that's the great thing about homeschool. Like we could just adapt and make it work for our homeschool. But I just think that would be a super fun idea. All right, so those are my three ideas of how you can make history more fun in your homeschool. Please remember to check out that playlist down below and Jessica's website will also be linked down below if you wanted to look at some of her mini units for history. And remember to give this video a thumbs up and tell me down below. I know some of you have told me some of the history, like little units, mini units, unit studies, whatever you want to call them that you like to do, but if you have things that you just love to do to study history, put them down in the comments because they're so helpful for me. I love seeing them and I will see you soon.